Hey, this is Arthur Hill, Senior Technical Analyst with StockCharts.com. It is Tuesday, April 16th, and you are tuned in to a special edition of On Trend. I'm actually on vacation. This has been pre-recorded, and today I'm going to show you how I find growth stocks. We'll find some sources. We'll show you some growth-oriented ETFs. We'll look at some sub-industries that have some secular growth trends, show you how to set up chart lists, and how to analyze and run scans. And for Stock Charts members, be sure to check out the Arch Charts commentary for Tuesday, April 16th. I'll include some links as well as some scan code that you can use for your analysis purposes. So the first place we can find stocks that are most likely high growth stocks would be running a simple scan using the stock chart scan engine. And I've got a little momentum trick here in this scan that I'm going to show you. It's on the fourth line there. Now, before we get to that line, let's just look at the basics. Uh, we want U.S. stocks. We want the exchange to be the NYSE or the NASDAQ. The close, we want to be above 10. And we want average volume to be above 300,000. Now here's a little momentum trick. We want six month momentum, which is 125 day momentum, but we want the 20 days ago momentum. And the reason is because if you take the current six month rate of change or 125 day rate of change, your stock is probably gonna be overbought or at a high and you want it to come off a little bit. And so that's why I'm gonna take the 20 days ago rate of change. And I want that to be above 20%. And then I'm going to rank these by the rate of change, just the straight 125 day rate of change. And I'll run that scan and let's look at the results. So I got 197 results here and you may not need all the columns here. We can't see all the columns, but I could remove some if I wanted. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I really, you know, I don't need the universe or the clothes or the volume personally and I don't need the scooter personally. And so that's going to leave me with the symbol, the name. I don't need the exchange either. So I can just remove that by clicking that column. And then I've got the sector, the industry group, and I've got that rate of change number. And I can close this column a little bit and then look through these stocks. And once I get to these stocks, I can do some sorts. I could sort by industry groups. And I could see there's some aerospace stocks and, of course, unsurprisingly, a lot of biotech stocks. Now, once I have this list, if I want to put it into a chart list for further analysis, you can see that I can store these results in a new chart list, merge, replace an existing, or I can download it to a CVS format file. And I'm going to change the uh, contents of an existing chart list. I've got this chart list called scan dump, and I'm just going to dump all those charts there. And once you click OK and you've got those charts there, you're going to get a summary and you can go to 10 per page if you want to see 10 per page. Or you can go to candle glance and you'll get 30 per page to run through those charts. And you can do that on a regular basis. Now, what if we want to narrow this group even further? Say we just want to focus on technology stocks. So we can go down to the scan component section. And there you see sectors and industries. Choose U.S. sectors. And so I can scroll through these. And I could pick an uh, industry group if I wanted. Or I could just pick a sector. And I'm going to go ahead and pick the technology sector and click Add. And that's going to add that to my scan. Now you can see it's below the main scan. So I'm going to have to move that up, put it above the rank by line. So I'll just add and group is technology. And now when I run that scan, I'm just going to get stocks that are in the technology sector. And there you can see all of these are in the technology sector. And there you can see MongoDB. That's a new software stock that is one of the big growth stocks that you might want to check out in the future. Now, there are, of course, a zillion resources when it comes to growth stocks. And you can read until you're blue in the face or until you're falling asleep at your computer. Uh, but I've kind of narrowed down my reading and video focus as far as what I'm looking for. 
And I check out investor, investors' business daily because they are very focused on growth stocks and you can use it uh, free. There's plenty of information in the free articles and there's also plenty of information as a subscriber. So another resource I like is the Motley Fool. And this is obviously not the Motley Fool, but is Investor's Field Guide from Patrick O'Shaughnessy. And he does a really good podcast covering a wide array of subjects. But he interviewed David Gardner of the Motley Fool, who's a stock junkie. He's been picking stocks for a long, long time. And he knows about growth. And I'd recommend you take a listen to that interview if you're interested in growth stocks. Now, I'm the first one to admit, you know, these sites are full of advertisements and they can be irritating at times to read, but I think you just have to filter out the information. All I'm looking for is knowledge about the stock, all right? I want to understand what the stock does so I can put it into a particular group. In other words, does it fit into the electronic payments group or the cybersecurity group? Uh, those are two groups that I think have a secular growth story behind them, cannabis stocks. So I'm looking to learn more information about individual stocks. I'm not necessarily interested in oil demand as it shows here, uh, but you can see there's an article on Aurora and Hexo is another uh, cannabis stock. So cannabis stocks are hot right now. And you can find out information about individual stocks and then learn to categorize them yourself. And in a little bit, I'm going to show you these sub-industries I think are important. So I also take a look at YouTube and I'll look at CNBC television or Bloomberg, but very selectively. All right. I know what I want to hear. If there's a technician that I respect, I will listen to it. If there's an analyst that I respect, I will listen to him or her. And you can see here, I've got Lisa Ellis, who's the number one rated analyst for the electronic payments industry, which is a, what I call a sub industry that I'm very interested in because I think it's got a secular growth story behind it. And so I've just, you know, searched for Moffat Nathanson, which is the firm she is with and the word payment. And you can see all these hits. If I want to learn about the payment industry. Also, there is Bloomberg technology that you can follow. And there is the cybersecurity group, which is also very important these days. So I'm just Googling or YouTube searching CNBC cybersecurity stocks, and I get a number of hits. And I usually want to hear from an analyst, all right? I probably don't want to hear from Jim Cramer, but I wouldn't mind hearing from an analyst. And then the other resource that you can check out would be Bloomberg Technology. And if you just search YouTube, there's Bloomberg Technology. And there you can see Gene Munster. He's all right. I think he's a little too bullish on Tesla. But the important thing is we're just looking for the stocks here. And we're going to apply our own technical analysis to these stocks later. Let the analysts find the industry groups and identify the stocks. And then we're going to put our analysis to them to find the ones that are in uptrends and have, you know, real uh, growth potential in the stock price. All right, now I want to focus on five growth ETFs. And these typically have the name like Innovator in them somewhere. And they are supposed to be, you know, innovative companies that are set to outgrow the broader market over the long term. Uh, but as we all know, uh, we can have short term fluctuations and we really need to look at the charts to see if they really are outperforming and have potential. So this first one here is the ARK Innovation ETF, you can see there, A-R-K-K. -K. And the top holdings, well, the top holding is Tesla, which is uh, maybe now an industrial stock. Sure, it's innovative, but um, I think a lot of the other car companies are catching up or have caught up as far as making electronic cars are concerned. So you can see there is the Innovator ETF with the bars and QQQ, which is kind of the benchmark in the dashed gray line. And we can see that as far as relative performance, uh, ARC was tracking QQQ fairly well up until September. And then it started moving lower. ARC is the black line, QQQ is the red line. But if you look at performance now, you can see that ARC is up 10% and QQQ is up 5%. So it does outperform on the upside. But of course, the downside is 
it'll go down more on the downside than QQQ. So you are getting some leverage here with ARC. Next up is the Innovator ETF, and it's based on the IBD50. That's, of course, Investors Business Daily and William O'Neill. And you can see here that this ETF is not performing that well. All right, it moves step for step with QQQ as far as ups and downs are concerned. But you can see that it has got a lower high working here. And QQQ has got a higher high. So QQQ is outperforming over the last few months. And then if we look at the performance line, we can see the IBD50 ETF, which is the black line, and QQQ, which is the red line, performing in line. But then when stocks got hit, that IBD50 took a bigger hit and was down over 20% at one point in December uh, as far as this performance line is concerned. And then you look at the one-year performance now, you can see that QQQ is up 5%, whereas the IBD50 is down 5%. So I think this is probably not the best vehicle for chasing growth stocks. However, we can look at the list. We can create a chart list of these stocks and follow the individual stocks. And we'll do that a little bit later. Uh, another ETF, which is fairly new, and you can see its performance isn't that great. It's the innovator ETF called the IBD Breakout Opportunities ETF. And you can see that Whereas QQQ has had quite the run recently, the Innovator ETF eh, it didn't get above this high here. All right, so it is underperforming QQQ. And you can see it, it retraced maybe less than half of that advance, and it looks like it's rolling over. And if you look at the percentage change, you can see there's QQQ again up 5%, and the breakout ETF, is down 19% still. So it has not recovered these losses. But still, we can look at the stocks within because I think that's what you have to do with these ETFs. You use them for the stocks that are within and go down and use your analysis techniques there. Here is the uh, another innovator ETF called Loop. And this is the Loop Frontier Tech ETF. And you can see that it is tracking uh, QQQ pretty well on the downside and on the upside, but you can see QQQ had that little surge and loop did not get above that high. And if you look at this performance line, you can see that loop is down around 5% while QQQ is up around 5%. So it's not keeping pace with QQQ. Here is the Motley Fool small cap growth ETF. Now this one is performing different. Now granted, it hasn't been around as long, but we can still see a December high here. And this ETF got above that December high and it got above this October high. So it showed some strength here with that move. Um, the jury is still out, but you can see when the market does rally, this ETF outperforms, it's up 15% whereas the, uh, the QQQ is up 5%. And we can also look within this stock list for opportunities. But this one seems to hold promise if you're looking to capture a little bit of beta. And beta is means if you want to outperform the market during a broad market uptrend, this is one to consider. I think it's got around 100 stocks. We'll look at that in a minute. Now, there are also a few sub-industry group ETFs, and these are very specialized ETFs that only focus on a particular industry group, but actually it's an industry group within an industry group. So, for example, you have healthcare and you have biotech, and then you have a sub-industry there that could be called cancer immunotherapy, and this is an ETF here. You can see the symbol CNCR. So you can look at that ETF for potential symbols or for a potential ETF that has a specific niche you want to target. Now you can see here the performance isn't that great, whereas QQQ is up five or so percent over the past year on this chart. The immunotherapy is down 30 percent. So you still got to look at the chart. Now, the next one is cannabis, and this is, of course, from ETFMG. They call it the Alternative Harvest ETF with the appropriate symbol MJ. 
And you can see this one is better performing because QQQ again is up 5%, but MJ is up over 20% over the past year. Now it's more volatile because you can see it was underperforming, outperforming, underperforming, outperforming. So it's going to be a volatile one, but if you want to focus on a particular, particular sub-industry, this is the way to do it for cannabis. Another sub-industry would be hack. All right, you have the technology sector, and then within the technology sector, you have companies that specialize in cybersecurity. And you can see that this ETF had a big run in January, February, and is almost near a new high, and it is outperforming QQQ. Then we have iPay, which is the electronic payments ETF, and that is from Pure Funds. And you can see it's a pretty volatile one as well. You know, it was down around 15%, but it was outperforming QQQ in September, performing in line in December, but it's back to outperforming. It's up twice as much as QQQ now over the past year. And then one other one is the Israel Innovation Technology ETF from ARC. And what's interesting is, you know, it's every month or three months you hear of some Israeli company getting taken over, a technology company. And so this is a mix of stocks that I think we would want to have on our radar here. The symbol is IZRL. Now, for me, the value of these ETFs is not so much as a trading or investing vehicle, but a way to find out which stocks are in these sub-industries. So I'm on the ETFMG website, and you can see I'm on the iPay ETF page for this website. And if you scroll down, you can see all the information about the ETF. You can see the fund prices. And when you get down there, you can see the top fund holdings. And then there is a link to download all those holdings so you can look at the individual stocks in that ETF in a chart list. There's also the hack ETF here for cybersecurity and the alternative harvest ETF, which will show you the top stocks as far as the cannabis industry is concerned. And there is Kronos at the top there. Also, for the cancer immunotherapy ETF, you can go to that site to find those stocks. These are going to be some volatile biotechs, so be careful. And finally, you can go to ARK Invest to find out about the Israel Innovative Technology ETF. And there's a link there for the top 10 holdings. So now I want to show you how you can get the symbols and names for a particular ETF into a chart list at Stock Charts. And so what I did was I went to the fund family website such as ETFMG and I downloaded the CSV file for iPay, which is the Electronic Payments ETF. And you can see on this ETF that there are some symbols that are not US based and stock charts is not going to have those. So I need to delete those symbols. Now, when we upload these to a chart list, all we need is the stock ticker and the name, the symbol and the name. And so I'm just going to highlight those two columns and I don't need that first row there and I'm going to copy it. And so now I'm going to go over to the file that I've created for the upload and I'm going to paste those and I'm just going to do a paste special values. And there you can see now I have my symbols and my names and I'm going to go ahead and save that file. I call it SCC symbol upload because I do this quite often. So at this point, I need to create a new chart list or use an existing chart list to put these symbols into. So I'm currently in my ETF list for growth stocks and I want to edit that list, any list you can do this to, and I'm going to choose new list and I'm going to call this stocks. I pay for the symbol, click OK, and I will get a new chart list. So once I've made this chart list, I'll go down and I will click upload CSV file. I'm going to browse for that CSV file and there I see symbol upload and I'm going to upload that file. 
and you see down below, I'm going to get a couple of errors. It's not going to recognize that first line and it doesn't recognize this symbol. So it's not going to use it either, but I'll take all the other ones as they are. They look good. Click OK. You will now have a chart list with all of the electronic payment stocks from that ETF. Now, not all sites are going to give you a nice CSV file to download and put in the format needed for stock charts. Here's the Motley Fool Asset Management ETF for small cap, small cap growth stocks. And you can see it's in a PDF file. And I tried, you know, highlighting these and copying them, but it didn't work. And so basically I just had to do it the old fashioned way. And I had to copy the tickers separated by a comma and enter them into a chart list that way. So once again, I just create a new chart list with the button up at the top and I'm going to call it stocks MFMS for the Motley Fool small cap ETF. And once that is created, I can go down and I can choose many and I can add multiple symbols separated by a comma. So I put this list of symbols up on a blog post for the date of this broadcast. So you can go to that blog post and get those. And it's pretty easy. There's only 32, so it didn't take that long. And click Add Charts, and you will get all those stocks. There's 31 actually here. You'll get all those stocks in your chart list for small cap growth stocks from The Motley Fool. But once you've got your list, it becomes really easy for analysis. So I can click this list and I can view these as candle glance charts. So I'm going to get 30 charts per page and I'll just move that over and you can see I've got three on each row. So I've got my cybersecurity stocks here and I can see how they're performing. And then I get down to electronic payments with MasterCard and PayPal. Square and Visa. And then we get to the cannabis stocks down below. We see Aurora, Canopy, Kronos, and such. And so that makes it really easy to track these sub industries that you think might have a secular growth story that you want to follow for several months, maybe years, who knows. Now, once you start analyzing these sub industries, such as cybersecurity or electronic payments or cannabis, you're going to start seeing stocks that probably aren't worth your time or not to your liking. And you're going to, over time, have a core group of stocks that you want to follow in that sub industry group. And so what I've done is I've created a chart list called stocks sub industry, as you see there. And here's a section of that chart list that you can see. Basically, what I've got is some cybersecurity stocks that I want to follow on a regular basis. And then you can see some electronic payment stocks. And I've prefaced these with the name of the sub industry, ePay, CyberSec for cybersecurity. And then if you scroll down, you can see I've got a section for cannabis stocks prefaced with MJ. So the first letters or word keep them grouped together. So all of them are together. And I don't want to follow every cannabis stock that's out there or every electronic payment stock. I want to follow the ones that are bigger, the ones that uh, meet my criteria as far as charting and liquidity is concerned. And that'll come over time as you develop the list. So once you've created your chart list, you can start your analysis process. And one good way to further filter out these stocks is with a simple scan. So this is a scan and I've added a favorites list that is favorites no list number 300. And it happens to be the FFTY stocks, the IBD 50 stocks. And I put my scan criteria. I want the minimum value of RSI over the 75 day period to be above 35, the maximum value to be above 69, which means it became overbought. There was strong buying pressure. It didn't go below 35, which means selling pressure was contained. I want the five day moving average to be above the 200 day moving average. And I want to rank these by RSI, but I don't just want to do stocks in the IBD 50 ETF. I want to add some other chart list stocks to this scan. And so I go down to the section for chart list below and I can scroll down to my stock section. You can see I've got a lot of chart lists 
over the years. And so I'm going to add hack and click add. And I'm also going to add the Motley Fool chart list. And that would be stocks MFMS and click add. And when I've added all the chart list I want, I'm going to have to copy those up to the top because that's where you should do your first sort. Because what you do is you start with the universe of stocks and then you narrow it down. And this already narrows it down to these three chart lists, which is going to make it a really fast scan. And once you've got that in order, you can click check syntax to make sure your scan is written correctly. And then you can run that scan. So I ran this scan and I got zero results. And the syntax is right, but there is a problem. I am using and instead of or for the conjunction joining the chart list. So let's go take a look. This is a good learning experience here. So basically I'm looking for a stock to be in this chart list and this chart list and the third chart list. Well, that's not going to happen. So I have to change this and to or. So I need it to be in this IBD 50 chart list or in the hack chart list or in the Motley Fool small cap chart list. And once I've done that, I need to close those three with brackets on either side. So I'm just going to add a bracket. So now I've got the stock must be in one of these three chart lists and these three criteria must be met. And then I'm going to rank by RSI 14. So I click run scan and I get 20 results. So now I have some stocks to work with that are showing strength. So once I have these results, I can do a number of things. I can put these results in a new chart list. I can merge the results with an existing. I can replace an existing chart list with these results, or I can put it in a CSV and I'm going to replace these and I'm going to put it in a scan dump chart list and click OK. And now I have those 20 stocks, which seem to be the leaders of those stocks that I was scanning with. And I will go for candle glance so I can look at these to see if I like any of these charts for further consideration. Or perhaps you want to play for a little upturn after a pullback. So in this scan here, I've got the three chart lists that I want to scan. And I want the PPO line 535 to be below one, which means it's close to that zero line, the center line for the PPO. It's come back towards its midpoint, which implies a pullback or a consolidation on the price chart. And I want the PPO line to cross above the signal line. So that means the PPO line is turning up. And then just for a broad trend filter, I want the five day SMA to be above the 200 day SMA. And I'll rank by RSI. It really doesn't matter what this is going to be ranked by. And click run scan when you're finished with your criteria. So there you can see we only have two stocks that meet this criteria in this situation. Meritor. So I will click that symbol or that name to get that chart. And there you can see the 200 day and you can see a nice breakout and the PPOs come back towards the zero line and turned up. And if I go back, I can click on Lululemon and see what that chart looks like. And we can see a similar setup here where it's pulled back. The PPO has come below zero this time, but it's starting to turn up. So this should give you enough information to get started for finding growth stocks, putting them in a chart list and analyzing them. Also, check out the Arch Charts commentary for April 14th for more details. Thanks very much for tuning in. Have a great day.